Coinbase is getting into the base layer business. First, you got coin, the stock. Now you have base, the L2, based on optimism that allows developers to build stuff. Uh, they're incubating this effort initially, and then they plan to pr progressively decentralize it over time. I think this is a really interesting move from a pillar of the centralized finance scene. This is pretty crazy that Coinbase is launching its own L2. It's base. It's called base. Anyway, <laughs> I'm tossing it to Will. What do you think this is about? This like Is this sort of like how you decentralize CeFi and how you get developers to build in your playground? What is, what is going on here? What's your take? I look like the emoji they tweeted this morning to uh, announce the whole deal. Uh, this is a pretty interesting project for a few different reasons. The first of all is the fact that they're using code to do something that traditionally has been done by financial services, right? People with licenses in buildings in different places around the US. All those people are being replaced by an L2. They're all being replaced by automation. This is what the promise of smart contracts was. A lot of people think about smart contracts. They think about Ethereum. They think about, well, maybe I can launch this token or I can have this thing automated. Things like Slocket, just throw it back to Adam's old days in the industry, right? Those things were around. Well, now we're kind of past that, right? We're getting really to where uh, Ethereum or Vitalik and other builders were seeing uh, automated financial uh, services, if you will. And that's what this whole project does. So basically, they have taken Optimism, an L2 roll-up on top of Ethereum. Essentially, you can think of it as a smart contract that allows you to move more funds uh, more quickly and then settle down to Ethereum so you maintain the same security, but you're able to have more transactions. Uh, important thing about this is they're not going to have their own token for it. They're having Ethereum as the gas for this. So whenever you need to pay transaction, you typically have to have a transaction fee. We call that gas in Ethereum. A lot of times different projects launch their own token associated with that. You have to pay in that token in order to use the smart contract. Coinbase said no, and I think they said no for a few reasons, probably most of them having to do with regulations. They're going to keep Ethereum, which think we more or less know as a commodity these days, it's sort of moved from security land to commodity land over its decentralization process. And that's an important note here in this story. And on top of it, I think it just gives more credence to this L2 thesis, which Ethereans have been working on for the last three or four years. The fact that there's not going to be a bunch of chains. You're just going to build your chains on top of them and everything will accrue to the Ethereum ecosystem. This is a pretty big launch this morning. I don't think we can really uh, underhype it. I'm going to throw it up to Adam. Yeah, I think that this is a big deal. Um, I also think that it continues to show that of the sort of like bigger companies that are out there, uh, you know, Coinbase continues to sort of just like put their head down and just like walk directly into the wave that has been now hitting them for years and years and certainly is bigger this year than it was last year. There's a couple of things here. The first off is that there are significant values to be found in ecosystems. And it's not surprising to me that they would be accepting Ether as a transaction processing mechanism because Ether is real money. <laughs> Whereas a token that they created, uh, you know, just for that purpose would perhaps perform the function of money, but is very unlikely to actually become something that is broadly used. So this is actually a way for them to generate revenue since I suspect they will be uh, at least some of the parties who are processing these transactions. So that makes a ton of sense to me. Um, the second thing is that you know, as regulation comes down increasingly on these companies who are US based and who have decided to go for that, decentralization actually does look like it is likely to be uh, a technique to ameliorate uh, some of the worst parts of the regulatory environment, right? If you can say that, hey, you know, Kraken over there actually abstracted and made it simple for people to use their staking service, but in doing so, they provided what the SEC will determine to be a security. Well, if Coinbase can put together a system that doesn't do that, as it seems that perhaps they already have, then that's really valuable for a company like that. And it's especially valuable if you can then generalize that and expand it out sort of to many other potential products that either you or somebody else could build. So I see lots of, lots of good reasons for them to do this, and it makes total sense to me. Down to you, Jen. Yeah, I'll go super quick. I want to get Zach in here too. I think it's so cool that it's not limited to Ethereum, right? There's say like Solana, Optimism, other chains are involved. I don't know what those others are. But if you think about developers who are building and they want to attract this like next billion users into these ecosystems, I think Coinbase is maybe the right brand to get to get behind that, right? They're a public company. They're regulated. They're one of the more well-known um names in the, in the mainstream. And so I think this is really cool. I think that they're thinking about this in a, in a really smart way. And if they can provide that solution for developers to make things faster, cheaper, and more accessible, I think that's super cool. Zach? 
I just wanted to be the guy who was going to be like, it's time for some game theory and then throw it to Adam about the regulatory stuff. Because I think that really is the interesting extrapolation here, right? If you can decentralize Coinbase uh, out of existence one day, maybe some of the, um, the real value proposition of this technology can exist despite the regulatory hurdles that are increasingly being thrown up here in the U.S. 